Joining me next is Arthur Brooks, the president of the American Enterprise Institute and the author of a new book, The Road to Freedom. Welcome, Mr. Brooks. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So I'm guessing that the title is a play on Hayek's uh, The Road to Serfdom, um, which is another defense of uh, the free enterprise system, <laughs> a classic. Are, are we headed down Hayek's road uh, to serfdom in your view in this country? I, I think we are. It's, it's not what Hayek talked about in, in the mid part of the 20th century in Europe where there's a knock in the night and a jackbooted thug. I mean, to be sure, we're not seeing that. Uh, but what we do see is one incremental little uh, incursion into the free enterprise system after another, one little po uh, politician's uh, compromise after another, and the result is that the free enterprise system, as our, I think as our founders envisioned it, certainly as we've enjoyed it, is no longer uh, what we see, and I think that we're going in, in the wrong direction. Um, you make a moral defense mm -hmm. of the free enterprise system. Um, do you think that the morality of capitalism is sometimes lost on its um, backers? Its I think it's. I think it's almost always lost. I think. That, <laughs> I think that the reason that we've been going down the road to serfdom is yeah. precisely because the backers of the free enterprise system have been inept at making the moral case again and again. They talked about the material blessings of free enterprise, which indeed are real. I mean, everybody knows that the free enterprise system makes us the richest people in the history of the right. world. Right. The trouble is that it, that that freedom is worth more than money, and people care about it because of what's written on our hearts about what it means to be a free society and a free people. Our founders were moralists. Okay. They, when they wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they weren't mm -hmm. talking about you know, the blessings of, of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, low-priced electrodomestic appliances. I mean, they, they were talking about what it meant to not have coercion from the government to be able to earn our success, to, to pursue our happiness, until we can talk about what true fairness means, okay. which most Americans understand means rewarding merit and building an opportunity society, not redistributing goods and services as our current president talks about. Oh. Until we can talk about how we lift the poor up by the billions, which is the blessings of free enterprise, until we can talk about why people deserve earned success and not the learned helplessness of statism, we're going to keep losing this argument. How do the Occupy Wall Street movements and the Tea Party movements fit into this narrative? Well, they, those are profoundly moral movements. They, the incredible thing is that the Tea Party in particular, mm -hmm. they sound like they're simply demonstrating against high taxes, that they're railing yeah, against yeah. government regulation. Mm -hmm. They're what they're railing against is incursions on our freedom. What they're demanding is a truly fair system that rewards merit and builds opportunities, as opposed to you know spreading the wealth around right. in the in the in the, the famous <laughs> words of our current president. So th this was a profoundly moral movement. It was a moral populist movement. The Occupy movement as well. It simply defines fairness differently, in, okay. in, in my view, in a very minoritarian way. But fewer than, according to most polls, somewhere between 10 and 30 percent of the population defines fairness as spreading the wealth. Somewhere between 70 and 90 percent of the population defines it as rewarding merit. So they're both okay. moral movements, but one is a minority moral movement, the other is, is clearly much more mainstream.